Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're in the brewery this morning and uh, just pull the viewfinder out there. Uh, we're in the brewery this morning and I've already made a start on welding up some of the repairs on the tanks and giving the new uh, welding mask a run for its money. And while it's sufficient, it works. It's not a bad mask actually, it darkens up pretty swiftly. The only problem is sometimes it goes black on you uh, when you want to get set up because the lights, I think, are setting it off in here. Which is odd because yesterday we couldn't get it to darken up for love and money. But yeah, it does definitely work. There's no adjustment setting on it either. So some of the panels on the tanks here, the panels are really thin steel, I think like 0.8 or something like that, maybe even thinner. And of course, you put any amperage into them on a corner, then it melts away. And uh, if you hang around, you know, too long in one area with your weld puddle, it will melt through and it's difficult to recover when you haven't got, um, you're not able to adjust the brightness of the helmet so you can see a little bit more with a little less ampage. But I'm managing to get by. So we're just setting ourselves up here to do this corner. So the corner on this tank leaks. It's really quite difficult to kind of weld things up in this position, but I'm hoping I can just reflow this section here so I don't have to uh, tip the tank over or break my neck getting to it. Fingers crossed, folks. Uh, but yeah, this will be the last patch on the tanks. Uh, all the rest of them are done now. And then all I have to do is cut off the cooling jacket on the other tank, you know, the one where it's too high up and then re-weld that one on. But that should be pretty easy because I can pull the ampage down and hopefully just flow her in without too much of a problem. And this steel on the main tank is three millimeters thick. So if I'm welding 0.8 onto three mil, my ampage will be low enough not to scorch through the three mil and cause coking on the inside. So looks like it's promising but the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the bacon. Let's, uh, let's get on with it. One, two, three, four. You don't know what you've been missing out on. I've been waiting around for you to call. You don't know what you've been missing out on. Fortune could be wisdom. I 
So to do that, I'm going to empty it by testing a new submersible pump that came through the post today. But first I need to get that onto that, so come with me. So we have some hot water, some hot water. And what we're going to do is just heat this pipe up to make it malleable. It's a relatively stiff pipe, oh, sailor, but not too stiff that we're not going to be able to persuade it go over the top of that connector there we go that ain't coming off now is it so come on follow me Gem let's go back over here so this now means I have a means of connecting 15 millimeter pipe to these 20 watt submersible pumps that I'll be using to recirculate the glycol around the system but not in this machine what I'm doing at the moment is emptying the water out of this machine so we can move it right do you want to stand this side because that's going to squirt right out of there love we've got one of the big class special death adapters and well, there we go. That's more than enough power to recirculate around the system, isn't it? There we go. I'll do it, Jim. So, wash the floor down. And uh, we're just emptying this tank. So, if you come and have a look in the tank, you'll see that obviously she's got suction pads on the bottom, so they do stick. Um, I'm going to go and see if I can kind of pull it off and maybe hoover up a little bit of this copper that's all come off the edge. Oh, there we go. We've actually lost the back plate. There you can see into it, look. So these pumps are obviously... Uh, they're watertight because they're all potted. I bet that front bit will come off as well. So that's why you can put your hand in there and not get electromacuted. Although I wouldn't recommend doing it on a regular basis. Right, we're nearly empty, Gem. If there isn't enough space in those other maxi chillers for this to be fully submerged, then it might be a case of putting an elbow on that connector that I've just put in there so we can face the intake port on that pump directly down to minimise the amount of space that it requires in order to uh, back that direction look. Have a look at that. So now it should be able to drain pretty much all of the uh, water out of this tank. Whereas if it was sat on its side, it would be sucking in air by now. And you can see as well, we've got ice forming on the coils, which uh, means that she's gonna she's gonna get us down to temp as much as we require. Right, I think that's it. I'm gonna pull that out. Pull that out. That can just sit on here, that'll probably dry over the weekend anyway. I'm 
then uh, we've got our system. I'm doing this quickly because uh, we've got to go. Position. I think that's ready to go and then pipe work coming up and out. Pipe work can follow this and then we can have like two pipes coming off to there, two pipes coming off to this tank, two pipes coming off to this tank. This will be moved once we've done all the welding. Right, oh my glycol's here as well. Before we go, we did get the monoprop glycol that arrived the other day. So we've got 50 litres of glycol. Right, I'm going to turn everything off, Gem. We're going to go and pick up your car. She's holding the camera, as you probably guessed. And uh, we're going to go home. So there we are. I think that's it for the day. So lights off. And uh, that's a wrap, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. Whoa.